Hey, thank you. Is there like a clicker that I need to know about? It's on the table. How's everybody doing so far? Awesome. Is this? Yeah. Um, like you said, my name is Maddie Steinkamp. I'm born and raised here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I'm an Irish American filmmaker, um, and uh, I totally love uh, everything that you're all talking about today. Like, it like fills up my heart and my soul seeing so many people talk about the idea of the power of storytelling, um, how you can use it for yourself, how does it grow the economy in general. Um, and that's really what I want to talk about today. Um, being an artist, you go through these hills and valleys of financial security, uh, financial, you know, pain, um, and you really don't, you don't really grasp it right away how powerful yourself is, how you can control, you know, your outcome, how you don't have to depend on the industry to find success, and that's, that's really like where my story like begins. Um, about 12 years ago, I was homeless. Uh, I was recently off of a five-year stint of being on tour with my band. When we got back to Phoenix, we had nothing, and nobody really cared. It wasn't, nobody was there to be like, hey, let me help you get a job. Um, most of the people I knew thought that I was a very successful musician because they would see my social media, they would see us at these packed music festivals. Um, they'd see us with famous people that n didn't know who I was. Um, and so when we got back, I had a lot of shame. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any assets. Um, I had my car. And uh, a buddy of mine had a studio where he was doing production. He was becoming very successful. And he said, you know, I know you're trying to find a place to stay and you do editing because you would make music videos for your bands. Why don't you come and do some editing at my studio? And this was the first time that someone like really like gave me a handout. It was like, I know you're suffering. I know you need help. Let me give you a hand. And this kind of like, this just like got to me. I was like, anything that comes after this, I'm going to be just like this guy, my friend. Um, I'm going to do whatever I can. If, if, if I make it out of this hell, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give back. And uh, it took a few years. Like, I was an editor at the studio. We would do real estate. We'd do commercials. Uh, we'd make short films. And I didn't really have a purpose in, like, my own art. I was making everybody else's stuff. Um, I was the video guy for all these small businesses at this studio. And it was fun. Um, I made money enough to get an apartment. I made enough money to pay back my bills, start paying taxes again and be a person that was a contributor to society. And but I still didn't have purpose. I didn't like know what my art was. I hadn't made anything that was mine. Um, even when I was in a band, I was singing somebody else's music, the songwriter of the band. And um, I was super passionate about a lot of the issues that Arizona was facing. Um, I came up in this public school world here. Uh, I had music classes in school. Um, we had extracurricular activities in school that were part of public school. And when I started, like, taking a look and seeing, like, how am I going to grow my business? How am I going to start my business? What is it? I wanted to, like, center around the issues that maybe young people were facing. Um, their access to the things that I had access to wasn't the same anymore. Kids weren't able to be creative. Um, they were forced into learning in a very... Uh, test-based world, and being an artist, like, I fail at that. I'm dyslexic. I can't read fast enough. I can't memorize things for a test. I failed so sociology and psychology easily three times in college, and these were, like, hurdles that I had no idea were, like, normal, that other people, other artists, like, totally go through this, and through all that, I started saying, okay, I want to make films I want to make documentaries. I want to help people share their stories in a way that is direct from the source. I don't want to be the newscaster out there being like, so-and-so said this. Well, I'm here today to talk about these people. I wanted to give people like their own platform, their own chance to share their story in a way that 
was important not just for themselves, but they would have a positive impact on the community around them. Um, I started my company, Mango Skies Films, and I left the studio that I was working at. My friend was like, hey, good luck. You know, go do your thing. Like, you killed it. You know, you've done so much for me in these past few years. Good luck, all this kind of stuff. And right after that, I, I had, like, my own clients that were wanting to make documentary films with me. So I didn't really have this, like, time where I needed to go find the market. The market at that point was already coming to me because I was already good at what I did. I didn't know what I was going to do yet with that capacity, but people were coming to me. There was this film that like always went through my head. Uh, everybody's seen Field of Dreams, Kevin Costner. Um, if you build it, they will come. And this began like literally like the motto of my business, the motto of our film festival. Um, really everything that we do now in my business and in my life is if I build it, people will come and they'll buy it. And it's not even that, like, if, you, if I help you build it, people will come and buy it from you. If you tell your story, people will listen. Um, a bunch of friends of mine, these two amazing people are here, Peter Juarez and Cash Cole, we got together and we made this documentary film. Um, it's called You Racist, Sexist, Bigot. Uh, it focuses on the discrimination here in Arizona and being a person of color, a person of marginalized communities that have to live and breathe in this crazy world that none of us, being a straight white man, know about. I didn't know what it was like to be a transgender woman from Mexico sitting at a bus stop. We got to hear these stories directly from them. We made a film. We fundraised after the film was done, and then it got into about 25 film festivals worldwide. We won seven of those film festivals for best film. We won... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, myself and Peter Juarez were invited to have our film at Phoenix Film Festival. At the festival, we were the only documentary to sell out all of our screenings. We were not nominated for an award. PETA, who is a queer Guatemalan filmmaker, was not asked to speak on any panel. She was discriminated against. I was asked to speak on panels. We're co-directors. We asked, can we get PETA on this panel? Can we have her speak? Sorry, we don't have time for that. The next festival came around in LA. I was asked to speak on a panel. She was not asked to speak on a panel. We come back here, Chandler Film Festival wants to have our film. We're like, we've already screened it in Arizona. Like, we really gotta have this film. Everybody wants this film at our festival. Okay, cool, as long as PETA gets to speak. Sorry, we don't have time for that. Why? Like, why, why is it that, why is that even happening? Well, because of discrimination, because of systemic racism, because of systemic sexism. These were things that are happening all in every single industry. You can't see it maybe, you know, when you're, when you're walking around in your day-to-day -day work, but it's happening over and over again, where it's just the lack of accessibility. We don't want you to have access. So we said, screw it, we'll make our own. We decided to make a film festival on the basis of nobody will be discriminated against. Everybody will be included. If you're going to be at our festival, how can we give you a chance to speak? If your film is going to be selected, how do we give you even a bigger platform? How do we give you money to put it out now that you can own it? You don't have to go to a distributor. You don't have to go to Amazon. You don't have to go to all these people. How do we as a festival support you directly? Well, we're going to have to go out and raise money as a festival. That's what we had to do. So we started Indie Film Fest back in 2019. There was 150 people that came to our film festival at Film Bar downtown, God rest its soul. It was the last independent film theater in downtown Phoenix. Every single day we sold out the screening. It's only 75 seats. It's not very hard. The next year came around again, 2020. Great year for everybody in business. We happened to have our festival in February, so it was literally like two weeks before they start saying there's a pandemic. We sold out the, the festival. That year, we raised $5,000 for artists to walk home with. So all the money that we raised from the festival, we gave directly to artists that won awards at the festival and said, hey, no questions asked. You get to use this for whatever you want. Because the problem in the grant world, in the film industry, is you're attached to something that they want. The city of Phoenix wants you to make a film. You got to do something about the city of Phoenix. You can't make it whatever you want. You have these arts groups that go out there and have 
you know, art-based films. It has to have very sp specific criteria. What happens if you've already invested your hundreds of thousands of dollars in your film and your project and you just need to pay back a credit card? These are the things that we realize as Indie Film Fest, like how do we better support our artists? Not just like on an inclusive level, meaning like everybody can come and everybody can be a part of it. Now how do you give them resources? How do you actually find ways to give them that success? So we decided we gotta get a studio. We have to find a way to re remove these costs from artists that they're accruing just because they're, they're, you get out of college, you have no money, you wanna buy a camera. You got another two years before you buy that camera that can be used on Netflix. Or you gotta get a loan, you gotta go get a gig that you don't really wanna do. These things are all stopping the success and the progression of artists coming out and being successful right away. The film festival circuit, you, you see these studies come out, if USC, 20% of the filmmakers that win awards in the film festival world are women. Only 20%, that means 80% is just given away to men. How do you create access or accessibility to all the filmmakers if there's already a lopsided scenario of who's making films? You have to go out there and seek it out, is what we learned. You can't wait for it to come to you. You have to go and find awesome women, awesome men, awesome you know, people around the world and say, hey, how can we help you make a film? You have an idea, how do we do this? You can't just wait for it to come to you. We can't sit by and just let discrimination keep going. We have to put a foot down, and then we can't just be like, okay, I'm not gonna not let it happen. I'm gonna now move forward and say, how do I help those that are being marginalized? Those that are being you know, taken away from their, ac their access to resources. How do you actively get out there and do it? So every year, we have our festival in February. It start started with a two-day festival, and now it's a five-day festival. It started with 150 people coming to our screenings. This year we had 3,000. This year we raised $20,000 for our artists, and now we're even moving to a, a $50,000 grant for next year that we'll be giving artists $10,000 a piece to walk away with. My good friend Dominic here is also part of the, the festival. His organization raises money just to give to artists in our festival. It's one of the nonprofit things that we uh, partner with is that people are actually going out there making a direct impact on community. Not this idea of like, okay, we need to build up our business plan first, the business model, and then maybe five, 10 years down the road, we can start impacting community. They started their org a year and a half ago, two years ago, and it's already giving people money. It's already making films. They're already creating art as a nonprofit that is benefiting our society. Indie Film Fest led me to a lot of things. Um, I'm very thankful for my community. I'm very thankful for the, the people that trust me with their stories. This last year, in uh, 2022, my friend Lucinda Hinojos, she's a world famous artist. You've probably seen her murals all around town. If you watched anything that had to do with the Super Bowl this last year, this beautiful painting was the ticket art for the, for the Super Bowl. It's the first time the NFL decided to invest in an artist to make a painting that would be like forever for the Super Bowl. She's also the first Latina and, and indigenous woman to ever create artwork for the NFL. She's one of my closest friends, and she said, hey, I wanna make a film about this. She went to the NFL and said, I wanna tell my own story, but I want my friend Maddie to, to help me share it. I don't want anybody else. So she went out and got this budget from the NFL, came to me and said, hey, we got one month and nobody can know about this. We all have to sign NDAs, and I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be me and you in this house for a month while I paint this film, or paint this, paint this, make this painting. And it was that. I couldn't tell anybody. I was about to have like my lifelong dream as a, as a content creator, filmmaker, you know, complex. I'm making a film for the Super Bowl. Can't, can't tell anybody. Can't even put my name on it. She makes this painting. Everybody's falling, like the art department of the NFL, they're falling, oh my God, it's the most beautiful, greatest thing. We wanna make a mural now. We want it to be the biggest mural in downtown Phoenix. Maddie, we want you to make a film about that also. Two films? Okay, that's another budget. We started getting too busy. I gotta hire more people to be my support. I don't call people in LA or the contacts they have from New York. I, I call my people here, people that maybe 
had never even the, the, the capability or the, or, the, or the understanding how to be on a big set and make this kind of film. I just need somebody to move a C-stand. I need somebody to hold the camera and take a photo of me while I'm f filming her. You know, I need somebody to, you know, maybe carry my backpack while we're walking down the street. I don't need a lot, but what that did is it gave four different people an NFL Super Bowl credit. That's literally, like, that's a monetary value in this industry. You're talking about a resume, the next thing, next time you go and see a client, oh, well, we just worked on this Super Bowl project. It's these kind of things that, like, I want all of us to be thinking of when you want to invest in community, when you want to build the artist economy, it's here. You don't got to look anywhere else. And it's not always the most, you know, capable, educated people. Sometimes you need that person that's loyal to you that says, hey, I got your back. Whatever you want to do, I'll carry that for you. They will learn. I see it here all the time here at the ASU school. My friend Bola, we have these parties at, at my studio. He invites the, the, the wonderful people from ASU. The network grows just by having people in the same room, making it accessible for people to have, right? From this, uh, there was a photo. This actually was the Wilson Super Bowl campaign photo that my friend Cassandra Alvarez took, and she was also the first Latina to ever take a photo for Wilson football. And that just happened because I was like, hey, I need you to come take this photo with me that day. She didn't know she was, she, I think she got $1,000 for this photo. It was in 1,500 magazines that month, this photo. The photo that I took of Lucinda, it's a different photo than this, but it was in like 3,000 publications. Not one of them gave me credit. Because, I, I mean, it was, I was a work for hire. Like, we were, it was part of a film. Like, I didn't even know that they had the, the photo. And next thing I know, I see it in the New York Times and Time Magazine and People Magazine. I'm like, what? Please, someone say that I did this, you know? Some things you do in the community you can't take credit for. And I think that's acceptable. I think what you have to do is you keep going. You have to keep going. You have to keep asking for more. You have to keep, you know, being an advocate for your friends, for the people underneath you. We started our studio uh, three years ago with Indie Film Fest. It's called The Garden. I don't rent it to anybody. It's free for all artists to come and use it. All nonprofit organizations come in my studio, they use it for free. We have 20 filmmakers right now that use our studio as part of their like business model. They get to go and charge people to use our studio. That's part of the idea of growing the artist economy. We remove the costs for these filmmakers to have to worry about getting into studio. We give them the ceiling. We give them the sky is the limits kind of idea that now they're not just in their laundry room creating their films. They're literally in a state-of-the-art studio. They have, they have an access to a screening room. They can literally have 5.1 Bose surround sound played for them when they're listening to their three-minute film that they're hoping to submit to a film festival. And that brings us to this picture right here. Every single one of these filmmakers are filmmakers that use our studio for free. And now every single one of these filmmakers have films and film festivals all around the world. Black in the Newsroom, Colette Watson right there in the middle, has been in Time Magazine. It's won film festivals all, I mean, it's still winning film festivals all over the world. And it's about the importance of having unique and diverse voices in journalism that's not just white men. We had her film in our studio. She had no money to make the film. She did it all herself. She came into our studio. She didn't have the editing platform to have the capability of editing her film. So we gave her our, our, our IMAX, Adobe Premiere. You can do it. You can come in, do it free. If you, have, if you need help, she had never done this before. And now she's an award-winning filmmaker all around the world. It's these little tiny successes that we need to like keep like advocating for. That all of us in this room, like you're gonna, you're gonna meet a filmmaker and they'll be like, oh, I don't have something. What do you need? I know this guy, Matty. I met him at this summit. He's got a free studio in downtown Phoenix. You need a submission waiver for his film festival? You want your film to be in front of 500 people in downtown Phoenix every single night? Here's a website, IndieFilmFest.com. That's all I have. Yeah. Thank you.